data rich information poor, right? Um, I think, um, uh, well, as I, let me just first start off with a brief introduction about, our, about the company. Uh, as I mentioned, I work with eDreams Odigio. We are a global leader in terms of flights. Um, we, I think, are in the top three globally when it comes to flight sales. Um, oh, well, this is, uh, top three globally when it comes to flight sales. We have uh, 44 websites and five brands. And we truly believe that data is important, right? So uh, we are data driven and we try to incorporate data into all of the decisions that we make. And I don't think this is just us or I don't think it's just, you know, we who believe this, it's really in the industry, right? So if you look at uh, McKinsey, McKinsey says that data driven companies are six to 8% more profitable than their peers. Uh, if you look at leading e-commerce players, right? So the 35% up there, that's Amazon. Uh, Amazon says 35% of all their sales comes from recommendations that they are making to customers based on data. Uh, Netflix says 75% of all content viewed on their websites is based on recommendations, right? Um, that's impressive, that's phenomenal. If you go back a little over a year ago and uh, you know, when Donald Trump was being elected president of the US and maybe some of us don't want to think about that, uh, but he won because him and, and Cambridge Analytics I think was the company they were working with they analyzed, or they say they analyzed, four to 5,000 data points on each and every American. That is being granular, but at scale, right? Uh, and that can get you elected to be the most powerful man in the world. So data is powerful. Uh, data is what is driving success today. Now, does anybody in this room, and, and you know, Leo this morning uh, teed this up a little bit, but does anybody in this room today believe that data is the problem, right? Um, any hands, like do we think that the problem is we don't have enough data? Anyone? Okay, uh, yeah, because you know, data is not really the problem, right? I think Leo mentioned this morning, uh, in the past two years we have generated more data than has ever existed before. Uh, you know, it's about 2.3 trillion gigabytes of data is, you know, generated every day. I mean, just the number of zeros that, that go behind that, right? Um, I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, in my introduction that we have about a few thousand of people uh, on our website every minute. I, you know, kind of invite you to think about your own businesses, right? And, and uh, if you think of the total visitors on your website uh, over a month, over a year, in a day, this is really, I mean, we're not talking about something that, you know, you, uh, that, that me or, or, or anybody here with an Excel file can really compute um, or can try and understand, right? So we have a lot of data. And as Ignacio, you know, was mentioning a little bit earlier, um, but it's not really about the data, right? Uh, in the world of analytics, we know that it's not about the data, it's about the decisions. Um, it's about the decisions that we can make off that data. There was a, um, uh, well, this slide was supposed to have a transition, it didn't work, uh, but essentially what, uh, you know, the, the cartoon that was there is about, it's a guy who is trying to wrap his head around big data, right? So uh, he has created 437 graphs uh, and he has tried to analyze each and every one of them. So, you know, Ignacio had three of these graphs, but, you know, if you think of, uh, social media data and you think of the weather forecast and you think of uh, you know the click stream data that's being generated and, and now you have you know all of this conversion probability that you're adding in there uh, and you have all of this data coming together uh, how what do you now do with it right uh, how do you make use of this to give you an example uh, from our business uh, we had a very analytics heavy team uh, I, I, the name has come up a few times uh, already this morning. And there were about 25 analysts. Uh, they had about 20 different tools that were giving them inputs, right? So uh, you knew about like segmentation and there was someone trying to tell you about, you know, what is the next best offer to make to this person and, and you know, they were trying to cut it by market, uh, by channel. Um, and what was the problem then, right? This sounds pretty cool. I mean, hey, we have 20 tools. We have all of these inputs coming in. Um, that sounds like, a, I mean, not a bad place to be in, right? I would agree with you, uh, except the problem was that amongst the 25 people, none of them could agree on which tool was actually the right one to use or which combination of tools. And 
uh, you know, that's also fine. You can say, hey, these five tools work really well, and let's just get rid of the other 15. But when we tried to do that, you had people up in arms and saying, no, these 15 that you want to get rid of, these are actually the most important ones. So, so what do you do now, right? You have a team of people that is not standardized. Each one of them is using his own set of tools uh, or you know, his own collection of tools to drive decisions. But at an organizational level or at, an, at, a, you know, um, at the enterprise level, we are driving suboptimal outcomes. Because I think we can all agree, right? Uh, we don't, or reality is only one uh, to some extent. So if there is the right decision to make, uh, it's kind of the right decision no matter who is making it, right? It, it, the, the decision should not depend on the analyst who is going to drive the decision. The decision really needs to depend on the data. And that's the problem. There's way too much data. Um, if, I, I don't know if any of you recognize this, but this is like a gusher, right? This is if in the old days you, you drilled an oil well and if there was too much pressure, it just exploded. Um, and I thought it's kind of fitting because we all say data is the new oil, right? So um, if data is the new oil, the world that we are living in, it's, it's kind of like this gusher, right? There is just so much data that is coming out every second. And if we don't know how to actually leverage this, if we don't know how to use this, we are going to be submerged under all of that data. Uh, and I'm sure there are some analysts in all of our organizations who, who really feel like that, right? Uh, they are drowning. They are underwater. Um, I think in a little bit because of, of the growth of data, I would almost say that our success at creating data has led to or is leading to the demise of the methodologies that we, that we used to use. So, you know, we've all, or, or businesses have evolved a lot. The, the analytics techniques that we've used have evolved a lot. But are they still relevant? Uh, and I would say a little bit, or human-based methodologies suffer from certain deficiencies, right? The first one is um, biases. And, and I just picked one. Uh, Ignacio spoke about this as well, but human beings are biased, right? Uh, this is not new. Uh, Daniel Kahneman, so behavioral psychologists have been speaking about this for a long time. Daniel Kahneman, Kahneman is written a book. Uh, Richard Taylor won the Nobel Prize this year, you know, based on cognitive biases, based on uh, uh, you know, how human beings cannot make perfect decisions. Um, I think the second one is, and you know, this is just, I have all of these reports and I have all of these data points. Uh, you know, what do you want me to do with them? Uh, how do you actually expect me you know, to, 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 to uh, put all of these together in, in a way that makes sense. And the last one is, uh, I don't know if any of you have seen Bollywood movies or a fan of Hindi movies, but uh, you know, the inside joke was always that the police arrived late. So everything was done, you know, the, the villain had been vanquished, the hero had won over uh, you know, the, the, uh, the actress, and, and then the police would come in. And if you think of traditional or, or the way that we used to do decision making, it was all to explain what has already happened in the past. It doesn't really go to help you predict what's going to happen in the future. And it really doesn't allow you to take actions on that, right? So it's descriptive, but it's not predictive. So it's all lost. I mean, uh, you know, where do we go from here? And at least what we have seen or, or in our experience, what we really believe is algorithmic approaches towards using your data can help you overcome these challenges, right? So. Um, we have done, you know, um, or we have now used these in a number of different areas of the business and what we, what we realize and what we have found is that it gives us the level of granularity that we require. It gives us the ability to, to really make decision making in real time uh, and to make decision making at a customer level which is you know, really what you want to boost performance, or you know, which is the secret of moving away from averages really to personalized, granular uh, processes and, and decision making. Is this kind of a silver bullet? Is, you know, is machine learning, and I think Ignacio also mentioned earlier, you know, is, is machine learning a silver bullet? Is, a, is it a panacea for all ills? Uh, no, uh, you know, it, it, it also has um, issues or, or there are things you need to guard against. Uh, some very obvious things that do come up is, you know, is there a bias that's inherent in your data? So if you are going to teach a machine on data that, that is, has its own biases, you know, that's what the, the machine's going to learn. 
you should think of a machine as, I don't know, you know, maybe a two-year-old child, and whatever you kind of say, he will retain it and, and just parrot it out, uh, whether you like it or not, right? So uh, you need to make sure that your data is correct. Uh, you need to also be, maybe your data can also be too perfect, right? So uh, you can actually train a model to be so good on the past data that you have fed it that it's an absolute ace at that, but you present it with new data, or you present it with data that it hasn't seen before, and you know, it's not able to do much. So uh, there are things which you, know, you need to keep in mind and, and, and be conscious of. But it is possible to do this, uh, right? This is no longer a pipe dream, or this is no longer uh, just a vision that I'm here, here sharing with you. Uh, but with the advancements of big data technologies, you can today really, with a customer on your website, uh, there is technology to help you start creating this data. So you know, this is typically what you would call event tracking. Uh, there are technologies like Kafka or Spark uh, that will allow you to do this. Uh, there's the data, well, I've called it data acquisition, or you could call it data storage, right? So uh, typically today, people are migrating to the cloud uh, with the vast amounts of data, you, uh, or you know, from a cost perspective, you really don't want to be doing this in-house. You, you probably want to be using, uh, there's AWS, there is Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, uh, I'm sure I, IBM has, has a lot of solutions. So uh, you know, there's a lot of options out there uh, in the market that are available. You need to you know, be processing or, in a sense, transforming this data. Um, and, and also, if you think about it, we've been speaking on uh, unstructured data coming from all of these different data sources. Uh, so you know, this is not a typical BI system where it goes through a process of uh, standardization and, and you know, all of these flows. No, you, you really want the raw unstructured data. Uh, and so you need to be able to you know, transform it into, a, into something that can be used. This is where you know, data engineers or, or profiles like this uh, would, would be very relevant. And finally, you have the business decisions, right? And, and this is, um, so to speak, where you could say the magic happens, and you apply machine learning, uh, you apply algorithmic decision making, um, and again, this could be outsourced. So we had a, a presentation before us with you know, an outsource provider. You could choose to invest in your own data science capabilities and build this in-house. You know, I, I think the options are really, or it's what is your appetite, what do you want to do? Um, but there are a lot of you know, different ways to go from having a customer on your website to truly understanding who this person is, what does he want, and how can we provide it to him at that very moment, right? Um, and so this is what it looks like, right? If you, 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 you put it all together and, and um, you, of course, need to build this, uh, this is what we, have, um, what we have created kind of almost in-house, I would say, but is an end-to-end -end, uh, platform to uh, take our data, to you know, process it, to apply you know, decision-making powers on it, and then to actually deploy that to our customer uh, while he is still on our website, right? Uh, to give you an example of the impact or the power that we have seen from something like this. Um, in our revenue protection, we used to have a team of about um, 20 analysts. Um, it's now been about maybe three years, and we started moving more and more to uh, machine learning. Um, and when I say revenue protection, it's really kind of risk management or, or, or fraud management, right? Which um, for OTAs or, or in card not present environments is a problem. And we were able to reduce our costs by 76% of what the original baseline was, right? So um, at the end of three years, we are at a fourth of the level we used to be. Um, and you may tell me, hey, Shravan, you know, that's really easy. I mean, you just started rejecting any customer who, you know, you thought looked even slightly suspicious, you just, you just reject him, right? So um, it's easy to just bring costs down. And that's true. But what we also achieved was a 20 percentage point increase in the people that we were accepting. So we let more customers through, and we reduced our costs. And I can tell you, we, we tried to do this with analysts, and you, know, you can create as many rules as you want, and um, at some point, it really just breaks down. Uh, and you need to let a machine drive some of the decisions that you make. Some things to keep in mind, you know, um, uh, I think maybe so far the story, or, or it's a pretty rosy picture, but you know, some things to keep in mind. I think the first is, with all of this data, and, and it came up on privacy with GDPR being rolled out, uh, you really need to protect on 
uh, how are you using this data, right? And, and to give you an example, maybe you're, you're familiar with, with Target and maybe about 10 years ago, uh, Target was actually so good at data, they were able to tell if a customer was pregnant or not, right? So based on shopping histories, they were able to identify if, if a, a female customer was pregnant or not. And they started mailing people out. Uh, and this led to a huge problem because there were families who realized that their daughter was pregnant because of, I mean, a, a target, you know, mailing thing saying, hey, congratulations, you're going to be a mother. So uh, <laughs> this is true, I mean, I, you know, and I think the problem with big data is you can go from, you know, data rich, information poor, to way too much information. And really, you know, it's a, maybe it's a good problem to have, but it is something to keep in mind. Um, and I think the second one, and it's come up a few times as well, is, is organizational, right? Uh, it's not just about, uh, you can have the best data, you can have the best analytics, but there is a process of change management within your organizations of getting really senior leadership to uh, make or, or be more fact-based, be more data-driven, and kind of move away from the opinions that people have, uh, because yeah, good luck trying to you know, move this hippo with your opinion. Um, so in summary, uh, what I would say, three messages, right? Companies that leverage their data, they outperform their peers, and there's a lot of data that's available out there. Um, the growth of data and, and the growth that we are seeing, it really presents new challenges to its use. I don't think this is, you know, it's nothing new. Change is the only constant, you know, things have evolved. If we go back maybe 50 years, you know, if there had been a conference like this, we would have been, people would have been talking about, I don't know, punch cards and main, mainframes and, uh, you know, Steven's uh, counterpart here would have been showing the wonders that, you know, IBM is doing with, with these massive systems and how they can help corporations. Uh, and today, really, in our cell phones, we have some of that computing power, right? So, so things evolve, things move on. And it's part of, uh, you know, algorithms and, and machine learning is a little bit where things are moving to. And that's what we believe is the next step to unlocking the power from your data and to drive commercial success. Thank you.